So today we are going to discuss on the formation of central nervous system. So we have two different types of the nervous system that is the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So we are going to start from very beginning that is there is a LH surge and that's why there is a release of OM into the fallopian tube. The first week of human development begin with fertilization of egg by sperm forming the first cell that is the zygote which contain diploid numbers of chromosome. Initially OM have two layers that is zona pellucida and corona radiata. So after formation of zygote there is a rapid cell division and at this rapid cell division zona pellucida is intact that's why gradually the size of a cells is decreasing due to cell division. After the formation of 8 to 12 cells this stage called as morula. Then after the differentiation there is a formation of inner cell mass and outer cell mass. There is the development of cavity which is called as blastocyst. The inner cell mass is differentiated and form embryoblast while the outer cell mass which form tropoblast. So basically once the embryo reaches the blastocyst stage approximately nearly about 5 to 6 days after the fertilization it hatches out its zona pellucida and begins the process of implantation in the uterus and after that there is a development of three germinal layers that is ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm and this is the important part that we have ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Ectoderm forms the exoskeleton and also our central nervous system. Mesoderm which develops into the organs muscles and circulatory system or somites and the endoderm which forms the inner lining of the organs. So here we have the cross section of the embryo in different times. So this is ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm and the neural plate is formed by ectoderm. If we talk about the brain everything is begin with the notochord. Above the notochord, here we have the neural plate. It is the simplest diagram of the development of the neural tube. The neural tube is the embryonic structure that ultimately forms the brain and spinal cord. It forms in a process called neurulation. Cells of the neural plate can be distinguished as elongated cells in the dorsal region of ectoderm. Folding begins as the medial neural hinge point. At this point, cells anchor to notochord and change their shapes while the pre-assumptive epidermal cells move toward the center. The neural folds are elevated as pre-assumptive epidermis continues to move toward the dorsal midline. Convergence of the neural folds occur at the dorsal lateral hinge point. Cells become wedge shaped and epidermal cells push toward the center. The folds are brought into the contact with one another. And the neural crease cells link the neural tube with the epidermis. The neural crease cells disperse leaving the neural tube separately from the epidermis. And there is a formation of neural tube. Basically, there is a neural plate, then there is a neural groove and after that there is a formation of neural tube which is after differentiate into central nervous system that is the brain and spinal cord. So till now we are studied the cross sectional view of the embryo in the different time intervals here, here. Now we are going to look on dorsal view of the same embryo at that same time period. The dorsal view of the neural tube looks like this diagram. The upper portion shows the cranial neuropore which is also called as the anterior neuropore and this 
lower section is showing the caudal neuropore, which is also called as the posterior neuropore. Ideally, the anterior neuropore closes around 25th days, while the posterior neuropore closes around 28th days. Failure of neuropores to close can cause neural tube defects. Anterior neuropore which causes anencephaly while a defect in posterior neuropore which causes spina bifida. What is anencephaly? Anencephaly is the anomaly results from the deficient development of vault of the skull and the brain tissue but the facial portion is normal. The brain is small, degenerated and exposed. Look at this diagram, the skull cap is missing. How can we diagnose anencephaly? In the first half of the pregnancy, diagnosis is made by elevated alpha phytoproteins in amniotic fluid and confirmed by sonography. And the another defect is spina bifida, in which there are different types. The first one is spina bifida occulta. Occulta means hidden. That is, in prenatal test, often this disease is not detected. This is the most common and mild type of disease in which spinal cord and tissue don't protrude. Usually, there is no symptom and may be often found accidentally. There are other types like spina bifida cystica with meningocele and spina bifida cystica with myelomeningocele in which the meningocele is the least common while the myelomeningocele is the most severe type of spina bifida. We are going to look on the top part that is this cephalic part of the neural tube. This neural tube is differentiate and form forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. It is also called as prosencephalon, mesencephalon and rhombencephalon. The prosencephalon is subdivided and differentiate and form telencephalon and diencephalon. And the rhombencephalon is subdivided and differentiate and form mesencephalon and myelencephalon. In telencephalon, we have structures like cerebral cortex, basal ganglia, and limbic system and in diencephalon we have structures like thalamus and hypothalamus. Mesencephalon which form tegmentum and tectum. In rhombencephalon we have subdivision that is the metencephalon and myelencephalon. In metencephalon we have structures like cerebellum and pons while in myelencephalon we have structure like medulla oblongata. So look over here. Here we have the simplified chart. Division, subdivision and structures and forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Forebrain subdivided into telencephalon and diencephalon while the hindbrain divide into metencephalon and myelencephalon. Telencephalon we have structures like cerebral cortex, basal ganglia and limbic system. And in diencephalon, we have structures like thalamus and hypothalamus. In metencephalon, we have structures like cerebellum and pons. While in myelencephalon, we have medulla oblongata. So this is the simplest chart we can remember. So here we have the simplest view of embryo. In which this is telencephalon. Here we have diencephalon. Here we have mesencephalon and rest of this this is rhombencephalon we are going to discuss that the origin of cranial nerves the first cranial nerve that is the olfactory nerve which is developed from telencephalon here the optic that is the second cranial nerve which developed from diencephalon third that is oculomotor which is developed from mesencephalon. Fourth, that is trochlea, which is developed from metencephalon. Trigeminal, which is also developed from metencephalon. Abducens, facial and vestibulocochlear 
that is 6th, 7th and 8th respectively which are originate from metencephalon while glossopharyngeal, vagus, spinal accessory and hypoglossals are originate from myelencephalon. So these are the cranial nerves and their origin. Hopefully you can understand the basics of development of central nervous system. Thank you.